Less than 75 days until Election Day, another week of campaign controversy and exchanged verbal barbs on the trail. Let's get right to it with all my all-star political panel, Republican strategist Ford O'Connell and political commentator Danielle McLaughlin. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Good to um, be here. Ford, let me start with you. A lot of people think the race debate is not good for the Republican side, and it certainly seemed that there was a lot of bloodshed at the end of the week. What did you think? Well, let's understand why we're having this conversation. Hillary Clinton had a very bad week. We have new evidence of a pay for play at the State Department. We've uncovered more emails. Trump is catching up in the state of North Carolina and he's making minority outreach. And basically this is a situation where the Democrats go back to their playbook. They like to pull out their, their favorite play, which is Republicans hate minorities and they break glass in case of emergency and they're trying to slime them. And obviously when we're talking about racism and Trump's personality, okay. Hillary Clinton's trying to right the ship. Danielle, what's wrong with what he said? Well, plenty of things are wrong with what he said, uh, particularly with relating to the emails. This notion that these are somehow some hot button Benghazi emails is simply not true. We don't know what is in those emails. No, it, it's different from Benghazi because it shows that there was pay for play going on in the State Department. Oh, I mean, okay. it shows real corruption. Well, there are 54 meetings, right, that were foundation donors. She gave thousands of meetings over the course of her That were part tenure. of her job. I mean, th th these were all the meetings that were not an obligation. Everything that she chose to do, more than half of them had to do with foundation donors. So. Now, that looks like pay for play. Well, so by that math, you've got 54 out of about 100 meetings, we're saying, so 50% of those. So that's 50 meetings over four years. So that's 12 meetings a year that she only, she had control it, over. It, it's, that's just doesn't it's make the any percentage, sense. and it's the email trail where it shows we tried to get in. They were turned down when they went to the State Department, but they came back to us. This is a good friend, somebody who's important to us. Please meet with them. And then they do. So it's like if you get turned down at the front door, you go give money and you get let in the back door. It's exactly what all those emails showed. Well, I, I would disagree with you. I think that there's, there's not a single email, actually, that shows that she did anything in terms of, will you give me this? I will give you that. There was no meeting with uh, the uh, one of the officials. There was no uh, visa Danielle, for the soccer player. There's plenty Hillary of, Clinton has ahead, been Ford. shamelessly lying about lying this entire time. She, she first said, Colin Powell advised me on how to do this, and I did what he did. False. There's absolutely no connection between the Clinton Foundation and my time at State Department. False. I neither sent nor received classified information. False. I turned over all my work-related emails to the State Department. And false. Every single time she is creating her own trap and falling into it. And now she realizes that she doesn't want Trump to get his mojo together. So she does what Democrats do best, and they slime Republicans with charges of racism. Danielle, you may not think there's any there there in terms of the emails, but last time around, I mean, her poll numbers dipped when they yes. got into this. I mean, when Comey came out, even though it ended up well for her, mm -hmm. the very next Monday, her numbers were down, and they said, wow, Republicans got what they want by bringing this issue out. Yes. I mean, would Democrats do anything to kind of keep the lid on this, whether you think there's anything wrong with it or not? Well, I think they will, because there's an allure to this. It's another dump of emails. And, you know, you can say she's a liar for four different reasons, but actually explaining what happened takes a little bit more time than probably we have. Uh, n this is not what Democrats want to hear. They want to have a debate on the issues. Uh, frankly, this, you know, what's being talked about with the racism and all these other things. Americans want solutions, right? Americans want jobs. I think Americans deserve that kind of a debate, not yeah. this nonsense they're, about they're racism. Real. So, Ford, I think we all agree that's true. True, that we need to have a conversation on substance, it doesn't seem like people respond to that. I mean, this is why elections are so dirty, because people respond to the negativity. Isn't that, I mean, isn't that the sad fact? Well, they absolutely do respond to negativity, and Hillary Clinton's path to victory is to make this a referendum on Trump's personality. It's the Clinton campaign that doesn't want to talk about issues. They don't want to talk about Clinton's list of scandals or Obama's record of government failure, because if they do, Donald Trump could very well become the 45th president of the United States. They don't want him to get off life support. He's dug himself a very big hole. They realize that he could get some momentum with this issue. So basically, they're trying to kneecap him right out of the gate before anyone figures it out. Danielle, I mean, I'm not sure you would disagree with that because the, I, the Democrats would like to make his personality an issue, right? Well, he's made his personality an issue. Like, he's run on his personality basically until about a week ago when he started talking about immigration. I'm not quite sure what his point is about immigration. I think we'll hear about that in two weeks. He has made this about being a winner. He has made this about being successful. He's made this about adjectives, and I think she's made this about policy, and that's the difference. So what advice would each of you give to the candidates on your side from this point? I mean, would you make it about the negative, the negative side of your opponent? Or would you try and focus on some of the issues? I mean, what would you tell them to do to win, honestly? What do you think, Ford? 
Well, I, I would say that you have to, if you're Donald Trump, you have to make this a referendum on the Obama failure of government and, and Hillary Clinton's on, dishonesty. The fact is that it, only 20 percent of independents find her, you know, honest. And therefore, yeah. you actually have to, to mesh that white working class voter with that affluent suburban voter or you're not going to get the 270 electoral votes. I appreciate votes. So your stay honesty. On message. Let's go negative on the other guy. Danielle, what do you think? Look, I think that this needs to be uh, about ideas. I think that you will punch and counterpunch, but I think she will do well if she did what, well, does what Michelle Obama suggested, which is when they go low, you go high. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> All right, thanks to both you guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Melissa. All right, could the younger vote decide this election? Next, I'm joined by a millennial panel to talk about what each candidate needs to do to get the country's younger voters energized. And later, you never know what will happen when Judge Janine heads outside for some street justice. Some of the best moments are ahead. Do you know of any country that's been a socialist country? No. No? I wasn't great in history class. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it's happening now.